dollar and someone took me up on it and I lost my uh, week's allowance. So, you know, here's a dollar. So she put a dollar around there and she said, as I'm speaking, anybody who would like to come and get it? And she began speaking well. I was old enough to figure that a dollar would get me a hundred pieces of penny candy. Anybody remember back that far when you can get a piece of candy for, they were all wrapped up, some barrels, and I had a hundred of them. And so uh, as she started to preach, I, I'm going to go get it. And I stood up. My mother pushed me down. R remember when you used to drive a car in the olden days and you had to slam the brakes on and your hand goes out to hold the kid back? Well, that's what happened to me. I started to get up to get the dollar. Whew. I said, I'll give you a dollar later on. Said, oh, man. That's great. She'll give me a dollar. I thought, boy, if I could still get that, I have 200 pieces of candy, you know? <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, I, this is as if I happened today. I, I remember, but mother held me back, and so Mrs. Martinison got her through speaking, and then she says, no one took the dollar bill. No one took it. It was free. It was right here, and so she kind of shames everybody. You know, it, it, you, no one came and took this. It was free. Why didn't you come and get it? Salvation's free, and, and she's kind of shaming us that no one got it. And I thought to myself, well, I would have, but my mother didn't let me. It's her fault that that dollar is there. Don't blame me. I would have taken it. But the idea was, hey, it's free. Come and get it. And that's sort of the way it is with forgiveness. It's free. Some people confess. You may even repent, but you really don't enjoy it. So we kind of have it back there, and we let Satan kind of keep us, you know, keep it in our minds all the time. And, and yet, our verse today tells us, tells us, restore to me the joy. I can come back to enjoying life. And you say, can it get any better? Yes. Don't forget verse 13. And then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn back to you. Do you see what he's saying? He's taking the the sinner who's now forgiven and saying you're not just forgiven, you're not just put on the shelf because you messed up, there's still purpose. And God still wants to fulfill his purpose in you. You can actually teach others from your experience so that they will turn back to God. Wonderful experience. Confession, you know, uh, repentance, and then cleansing, claim it, claim it claim cleansing. And if you do, you have the four, final step here, number four, freedom. You can experience it. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Guilt free for life. Think of that. And if you've committed an abortion or Sexual sin oftentimes uh, puts us in the same kind of a situation or any sin, and you really have sinned, and you've come now to repent and get forgiveness, and now you can experience it. That, that, that life renewed in Christ, Christ died for that. And for you not to claim that and experience it is kind of wasting the cross. So uh, whether you be here in our worship center, you're listening by radio or by internet, now around the world you might be hearing somehow you're connected with us and you're hearing this message uh, somewhere in a far distant land, as long as you've got internet, um, let me tell you, wherever you are, Jesus is there and forgiveness is yours for the taking. So refuse to let Satan or anyone else hold you bondage to former sins. God has forgiven you. Now go in peace. Enjoy life. Do not let anyone put you in bondage because Christ has set you free. Confession, repentance, cleansing, freedom. Now I know that there are some of you who are thinkers, and uh, you're kind of thinking this morning, what does your message have to do with the title of the sermon? If I could paint God's portrait. Well, I've thought about that, you know. How would I paint God's portrait? And it would seem to me that what we've been talking about would be something I would want to communicate if I were to paint God's portrait. What would it look like? 
All I can do is stick figures. I, I've never been able to be much of an artist. So if I were to try to, to draw the picture, uh, um, it would have to be stick figures or nothing. I uh, did try this week, and so I, in a moment I'll show you my picture that I've drawn of God the Father. Um, again, I want to say that I'm not an artist, but when I show you my picture of God the Father, you will have to admit that there is no artist in our church, and we have a number of them, or anywhere that can do any better than I have done. So let me show you the picture that I have drawn of God the Father. He's spirit, right? Anybody can prove on that picture? Oh, yeah, that's a picture of God. You can't see him. Although the scripture does say that Jesus is the picture of the Father. When you, when you look at Jesus, you're seeing what the Father's like. So now how could I draw a portrait of Jesus that would reflect forgiveness? And again, I'm a stick figure, and so um, I have to figure, how can I use a stick figure? And, and if I were to paint a picture of Jesus and the forgiveness he offers you this morning... Uh, it would look something like this. And what I, I like about that picture is, uh, you know, the cross. The cross. Jesus and the cross are, are one. And remember when you see pictures of him on the cross, his arms outstretched. The psalmist says, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed my transgressions from me. How far is the east from the west? It's as far as his outstretched arms will go. And that's around the world, around everyone. And there is no one that is beyond the forgiveness of Jesus. It's the cross. That's the portrait of the Christ who speaks to you if you have been involved in an abortion, a sexual sin, any sin. He's saying, look, my arms are open. Come to me, whosoever will. And if you just come and confess, I'll forgive. I'll cleanse you. Repent, turn around, and let my arms enfold you. That's what forgiveness is all about. Will you pray with me? And perhaps there's someone here in our worship center or someone listening by radio or internet that says, you know, this message is for me. Then I encourage you to, to take it and, and to admit that you're a sinner. Confess that and, and repent. Turn around. Change that mindset through the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. And claim, enjoy that forgiveness. Experience it. Experience the, the hands and the arms of God wrapped around you. Oh, my child, I forgive you. I forgive you. Now go and enjoy a guilt-free life. Father, I just pray for those this morning who needed to hear the message of forgiveness. I pray, our Father, that we will not just hear it, but we will claim it. Give grace to those who've, of us who are dealing with some